Hi, I'm Steve from the Stone Crafting Workshop. Welcome. Um, a lady, I think it was a lady on the comments section of one of my videos, asked me if I could explain how to fit the how the actual burrs fitted in a rotary grinder. I've got three machines, three rotary grinders. I've got this uh, Ferrex with a flex drive on it. And I've got two Parkside grinders. One's the cordless Parkside grinder, which I really like. It's a lovely little tool. And this is a mains powered one, 240 volt one going through a transformer, which I also like. I think they're all really good tools. Um, the problem is that the two Parkside grinders have got the same size fittings and the rotary tool has a different size fitting. So let me explain. To fit or remove um, a burr in the end of one of your machines, at the end of the machine you've got a nut, a knurl nut. And if you loosen that off, you can release the burr and fit another one in, just like that. And the reason you can do that, if you take the nut off, Inside you'll see this little brass doohickey uh, and it's called a collet and it's the thing that grips the tool, grips the shaft of the burr. You can see it fits in there and when you turn the nut because there's a tapered fit on the end of the burr, or, uh, on the end of the collet, it tightens up and grips like a set of fingers and it grips the shaft of the burr. Now, to loosen or tighten this particular tool, and most um, Dremel type tools, there's a button that locks the spindle, and it allows you to do that. So, I'm holding the spindle down, and as I, t I can tighten the nut down, and the shaft is not turning, it'll lock. I can lock the nut or loosen it. If you don't hold the um, shaft in some way, when you're trying to tighten it up, all that happens is the whole thing starts to move around and it doesn't tighten up. Now that's the same system on my cordless grinder and on my corded grinder, the 240 volt one, it, although it, it is 12 volt because it comes through a transformer. It's exactly the same system. On the flexible shaft, it's got a slightly different uh, setup because they obviously want to make this as small and neat to use as possible. They don't want the button on the end because I, I do find the button is a bit of a pain in the bum because as you're working, you're working away and suddenly you'll click the button, you'll hold the button inadvertently and you'll hear a clattering sound and it's all very irritating. But this one is a different um, kettle of fish. It doesn't have a button to hold the, 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 the shaft. And so to lock the shaft, you have to put a pin in that little hole. These machines are actually supplied with the pin. Uh, a, a type of bent pin that it comes with. I instantly lost mine. But it doesn't matter, you can just use an old bird. And you undo that and do it up and it's the same way as the um, other grinders and you put the burr into place, tighten it down, obviously you had that very loose, oh I'll tell you what, <laughs> let's take that off a minute, it doesn't work, there's a good <laughs> illustration of why you've got the collet in the end of the tool. I didn't put a collet in the end, and so it didn't grip. So, same thing, the collet's in the end of the tool. You're holding the shaft with a pin. You put your burr in the end, and as you tighten down this nut, it clamps up and grips the shaft. Now, they supply a spanner, which I use quite a lot if I'm working on heavy stuff, and that you just tighten that into place and that's locked in position. To release it you simply lock the shaft 
and use the spanner to loosen it and take it out. When you're taking these in and out you'll sometimes find they jam and you can't get them out and the trick is to just hit it inwards when it does that. Hit it inwards and it'll loosen up and it'll come out. The Parkside tool is exactly the same. You lock the pin in position, lock the shaft in using your lock, your, your lock button and then tighten it up with the spanner and it's in there nice and tight. In practice I find that I only use the spanner if I'm doing heavy duty work. If I've got a fairly big burr in the tool or a very coarse burr or I'm putting a lot of weight on it, you know, put, trying to really gaunch it out. Uh, if you don't do that, what happens is that the, the burr will lock, uh, the tool will keep spinning, and then you'll wear out the collet. And I'll show you an example of a worn collet. I don't know if you can see that. I've got two collets there. And they were both 3.2 collets and one has worn very badly and the other one hasn't been used and that's that process of, of, of the burr locking up on the work you're doing and the machine spinning around and it wears um, a bigger hole in the collet and eventually what will happen is that this collet won't grip the tool anymore. So far I think I hope that that's fairly obvious and simple. It starts to get complicated when you realise that um, there are different sizes of these um, nut fittings and collet sizes. I've got two. Let's take the Parkside tool apart for a second. And you take, take the nut off and take the collet out. And then we'll take apart this Ferrex flex drive. We'll take the nut off and take the collet out. Now the first thing you'll notice, I think, I hope, is that the thread sizes of the nuts are different, so they're not interchangeable. The Parkside tool is a 7mm thread, an M7 thread, an M7 fine thread. And the Ferrex tool is an M8, an 8mm thread. So the two nuts are not interchangeable. That's the first thing to say. And the second thing is that the collets are different sizes. Uh, this is a recurring theme on planet Earth today, is nothing is a standard size. They're slightly different lengths, which let me put it on my hand like that. They're slightly different lengths, which actually doesn't matter much, I don't think. What does matter is the this shaft size is different. The one for the park side, this is the shaft. It's either called when you're looking for these on replacement parts on eBay, you're looking they're they're called shaft or shank or tail this bit here and when they say that they're referring generally to that well that can be confusing because they also say uh, they use the same phrase shaft or shank for the, um, the the pin on a burr the shaft of a burr so really confusing but that's the way it is but the key thing you're look, going to be looking for is that the the, the collets in a Parkside tool are 4.3 in diameter, 4.3, and the collets in the Ferrex tool are 4.8. So when you see 4.3 shaft, shank or tail, they're talking about this bit and it'll fit in the Parkside tool and I think it'll fit in many Dremel tools. And when they're talking about 4.8 shaft, shank or tail, they're talking about the collet that will fit into 
the collet size that will fit into a flexible drive with a probably with an 8mm um, thread on the uh, an 8mm nut. All very confusing. It gets even more interesting when you realise that there are lots of different sizes of collets to fit all the different sizes of burrs there are. The standard size for diamond tools is 3.2 mil or 1 8th and um, that's what I use mostly. But there are lots of other tools with different size shafts. This one, I don't know what it is, it's um, I'm guessing at two and a half, something like that. And somewhere amongst this lot, there's a collet that fits it. So when you change tools from one size of tool shaft size, from a 3.2 mil to this 2.5, it follows that you have to change the collet that's in the tool. So you find the right collet for the tool, put it in the machine, put the nut back on, and put the tool in and tighten it up. And Bob's your uncle. Or it might be if you've got an uncle called Bob. So does that make sense? And some of these collets are really, really small. They're made to hold really tiny tools. This is a one and a half mil diamond drill I use and there's a collet for it and there are lots of other tools. If you look in your tool set, if you've bought one of these things, you'll have received a real, you know, array of tools with different shaft sizes. This is a different shaft size again, this little, the, the mandrel, this is called a mandrel, holding the cutting wheel has a different shaft size from these other tools. Because I've got two different sizes, it's a bit of an issue. The flexible drive machine only came with three collets. One of those is now really badly worn. One of them is broken, so I had to buy some replacements. And I found that buying the 4.8 shaft 4.8 tail. I could only buy complete sets running up from 1 mil up to 3.2 mil. So I've only got one replacement 3.2 um, collet. I've got a replacement 3 mil collet which a lot of these will fit into. But on the 4.3 size that fits in the 7 M7 um, nut size, I was able to buy a set of 10 3.2mm collets and they're the ones I use a lot of and a lot of these if you look they're, they're quite worn, they're quite badly worn because I use them a lot. So there you go, that's it about collets. I think that's all you need to say, except that I organise mine like this. I've got a toolbox with little square compartments in it. And I simply found a drill size that fitted the tail size on the collet and drilled a series of holes in a little piece of wood and I stuck a screw in the middle so I could pick it up. And um, as you can see, I've written 4.8 and 4.3 just to remind me what we're talking about when I'm, if I, if I go looking for spares. So, just to sum up, your machine might be different to this. You might have a genuine uh, Dremel, or you might have another make. And the things you need to find out, the first thing is the thread size on the actual machine itself. It'll almost certainly be either 7mm or 8mm. And that will mean it's almost certainly an M7 or an M8 fitting. You then need to know the width of the tail on the 
call it. Is it 4.3 or is it 4.8? Or have you got something really odd and something completely different? So I hope this has been of some use to you and you found it interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more reviews of tools and explanations of grinders and stonework and carving and what have you, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.